didn't realize I had my golds in my pocket still, so. This is all being recorded. I want you to know that. I want it to be. Okay, cool. Just let you know the type of mode I'm activating today. Yikes. Stunting on the Lord's Day. Yikes. W's and L's. Gluttony. W's and L's. The weekly recap show where we give a dub to the things that we do like and an L to the things that we don't. Perfect. I'll start this week. Okay, go ahead. First dub that I want to give this week goes out to Spelling Bee champion Zyla Avant Garde. Definitely had on my list. I know you did. That's why I wanted to go first. (laughs) Shiesty bass. Let me close my nose before you take it. Now, she a beast. I heard she's a dribble guy, too. What? She's a dribble Spell guy. Spelling B is just her side hustle. That was the thing I major. loved about it is that her <laughs> yeah. parents came out and was like, yeah, she she she, she, she spells, spelling but it's on the side. Right, yeah. Like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She really a hooper. She really a hooper, B. As a former Spelling B god. I'm yeah. sorry, what happened? As a former Spelling B god, it's it's wonderful to see I'm black not, people I'm out here thriving. You, I'm not about to let you juxtapose yourself with this young lady. I ain't never see you in no scripts, national spelling. Oh, I know. I never made it to the national. I, I'll, I'll throw that out so there. So, are you a god or are you a gesture, nigga? When it comes to you niggas out here, you a spelling gesture. I'm a spelling bee. If God, god sitting out on here. the throne, Josh ushering people in through the yeah, gates. he definitely is. I'll take that single file line. Let's I'll go. Take that. White gloves, like let's get right. let's get through here. These two niggas, no, hell no. Spell no. I want to be him. Go ahead. <laughs> Damn, you gonna keep I could, us from I could the do. great beyond. For spelling, Yikes. two weeks in a row. Remember Jesus. for spelling, Jesus. yes. Last week he wanted to be kidnapped. Mm-hmm. Last week he wanted to be kidnapped. Now he wants us out the pearly gates. Jesus Christ! That's getting edited out because that never happened. Help us. Anyway, mm. love to see here. black people make it. You know what I mean? First black African American spelling bee champ, which shocked me. I was like surprised. It didn't shock me. I, I, so I was. I was surprised. A, a, a lot of uh, people from the Middle East. Okay. Yeah, that's really and obviously bag. a lot of white people, but uh, no black people yet. So shout out to her. Um, I want to give a dub to Drake. Jeez, nigga. Drake, <laughs> Drake, the nigga that got body by Pusha T, the nigga that hiding his kid from the world, but his world went to hide from the kid. Arby Graham in a wheelchair. Drake, yes. Okay. Because you a nasty man. What you he's. A- you a nasty nigga. You a nasty <laughs> Why am I nasty? Continue. Continue. Why am I nasty? Why are you giving him a dub? Well, he's out here, uh, you know. What's he doing, dating. Josh? He's out here dating. Who's he dating, Josh? He's uh, dating basketball phenom Amari Bailey's mother. And, you know, he got him a cold one. So, you know, I figured I'd. Continue. I'm not going to hate. Continue. You know what I mean? I'm going to give him a dub. Why are you giving him a dub, Josh? That, that's it. That's it. This nigga got caught on a drone because he rented out the Dodger I Stadium. Seen that, yeah. He did do that. I'm not going to give him a dub for nah, you know flexing that hard. Don't give him a dub for Just, flexing. Don't, don't give that's, him a dub. That's not what my dub is for bagging a shorty that you could get out of Dykeman from playing a five on five that game. Nuts. She looked like every Dominican in the Bronx and Harlem. Dog. <laughs> so we're not doing that. You that is saying? nuts. Told I got to give an L to the niggas who are like basically bullying Amari Amari Bailey now because they're like, oh, Drake's hitting your mom. Blah, blah, blah. Grown ass mm. men. Grown ass men Let's doing that. Let's expand on that for a second. Let's do it. Drake's been around, been in this business for a very long time. Do you think that he would have any type of foresight into what might happen to this young man when he started publicly dating his mother, showing up at his basketball games, doing that kind of thing? You think he would have some foresight into that? Because I just wonder why he's so apt to do it to this young man when he was so conscious of it for his own child. You know, I'm just, just, just saying. But. I mean, it's he's already on the national stage as a high school basketball player already without Drake being there. So it's not like he can hide this kid yeah, considering he's, he's definitely getting bullied for his mom's boyfriend before Drake showed up. True. Mm-hmm. But he was already on the national stage. He's already a public figure. It's right. not like he can he hide this. He kid. was definitely getting vitriol online before Drake came into the picture. It was oh. exhaustion at yeah. first. And now it's. But I'm I'm, kicking down your mama at the Dodger Stadium. But grown ass men should not be doing that to a 17 year old kid. Or 
how about you have some fucking discretion? Now, the whole Dodger game thing, like, he running out the stadium. There's, there's no more discretion that you can get from that. That's but showing saying. at this young man's basketball games, like... But the original on, headline for that was Drake was at the game with LeBron for Bronny James. And now that it came out that he's dating his mom, now it's a whole different thing. Either way, you cut this pie... It's still nasty. The same it's slice. nasty for the it's nasty slice. for grown men to be bullying slice. him. That's nasty. No, absolutely. Nobody. I'm not taking that. Drake, you a sick nigga. I'm gonna say but it first. He knows. He full. He told us in album form what happens to children in the in the, the public the life of celebrity. Right. So like, miss me. He wants some skins, and when he's not dating this this, this woman in six months, the boy will be left with the the aftermath. Right and and she will obviously, but I just you know if, if we're if we're keeping you know how niggas do it they give Drake all the passes in the world yeah, to do all, all the, the passes shit. in the world no, no well you know he was keeping his kids secret because he didn't want the world. I do want to give a dub to Amari Bailey as well because he's actually California Mister Basketball this year. So shout out to Amari Bailey. Yeah, shout shout out to bro. bro. Shout it's out a bro. lot worse niggas that could be. You could be Scotty Pippen. Son. You know you. <laughs> <definitely>. <laughs> True words have never been spoken. You fact. can be Scotty Res- Pippen. Respectfully, you can be Scotty Jr. Or and having one of your friends tagging your mom. Yeah. Oof. And have your dad on TV That's asking a, a plum fool. That is a Consistently fact. to sell a book. Oof. So, hey, amen. God bless y'all young brothers. Get some liqueur. Yeah. Tristan Thompson gets an L. Thank you. <laughs> Tristan Thompson gets an L. <laughs> Are you going to read it? What did TT You can read it. Uh, Lamar Odom basically posted a picture of Chloe. No, he commented on her picture. He did? He okay. commented on the picture she posted. He commented, not even something spicy, I guess, you know, just, just a little thirsty compliment that you would a chick that you may have had some time with. Okay. Maybe the reason that you're on crack cocaine. Hey, love you, Lamar Odom. You my guy. So he said whatever, like nice pick or something about beautiful hard eyes. Uh, he said something like goddess or something goddess like that. Or like heart. Let me see if I can. With a heart or something like that. Go ahead. Something, talking, something talking. wild. I'll find, I'll find the exact com- tweet. And so Tristan, for obvious reasons, taking exception to that quote, decided to basically up the smoke with Lamar Odom. Okay. So she posted a picture. He said, hottie, fire sign, fire sign, fire sign, hard eye, hard eye, hard eye. Tristan responds, God brought you back the first time. Play if you want. Different results. Which, first of all, first of all. Let's dissect this. Who's afraid of Tristan Thompson all like that? Especially if you're a Lamar Odom. Okay, this is a nigga with a Canadian accent. <laughs> that's that's the first question. You're not, you're not threatening with the Canadian accent. A black man with the with the Canadian accent? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Run. black man from Canada. Yeah. That's the first shit. And then second of all, being that you cheat on her Religious once a month. Man. Yeah, that's the laughable part about it. It's like, oh, you defensive. <laughs> oh, you actually give a fuck. See, I was under the impression that you were doing everything under your your power to get from underneath her. But also, so I, I thought you would have welcomed the sight of Lamar Odom doing <laughs> this on, nut no. ass shit. But hold on, wholeheartedly, Lamar Odom not pussy dog. No, so he's who, not. Who, who no, are you talking? Not. Who are you talking he's to, not. Justin? He's not. Who are you talking to? That's that's Queens right there. It's it's silly on both on both counts because, like you said. Chloe would Chloe and her family was a source of a lot of destruction for Lamar Odom, and for him to even be entertaining that as a possibility is mind blowing to me. But then Tristan, fam, I didn't even know you were still interested. Y'all still together? Oh, y'all still go together, huh? Oh, okay, all right. Well, last weekend I see you at the, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. My bad. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's wild, and uh, that's it for me. All right, let me let me take this over. Hip hop. Hip hop. It started out in the park. It started in the park with some vinyl and a Jamaican man with a net beater. (laughs) I have to give an L to two hip hop pioneers for separate reasons. Juvenile. Mr. Vax that ass up. He got a bag from BLK, the social media dating app, to do a song and he ruined Mm -hmm. back that ass up. Would vax that ass up. Vax you a handsome, you a handsome young brother. Won't you vax that ass up, girl? <laughs> who are you playing with? Vax that ass up, and he has vaccination cards, and he's making it rain. 
Girl, you look good, won't you vax that thing up? You're a handsome young brother, won't you vax that thing up? They in real life, you need to vax that thing up. Feeling freaky all night, you need to vax that thing up. And Manny Fresh is there in the tall T for moral support. Uh, Providing his verse. Didn't even get that far. Okay. Didn't get that far. Did just, not, just throwing that out there. I refuse to get that far. I thought it was hilarious. We appreciate I, the message, but... Uh, we don't need to see that ever again. That Please. video was hilarious. I hope it was worth it. I, I'd rather hear you sell gyros than sing about like vaccinations. Slap your mama! As a PSA, terrible job. As a funny video on the internet, hilarious. They failed to miss their mark on what they were trying to do is what I'm trying to say. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. We're going we gonna, to we gonna keep it in with the, the hip-hop slander. P. Diddy, man. Sean Combs, excuse me, brother love. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I am so sick and tired of rich, successful niggas getting on the internet and lying and embarrassing their parents. I forgot all about this. This man said, I woke up one morning with 15 roaches on my face. And that's when I woke up and knew that I couldn't live like this no more. Hey yo, what the fuck? Yo. <laughs> Let me sip my chlorophyll water. Yo. Fifteen. Fifteen roaches. <laughs> so like you woke up and was like, damn, one, two, three, oh fuck, four, five, shit. Your mom checked on <laughs> you and woke you up before you went to Mount Vernon Academy. Whew. And was like, Sean, roaches on your face. One, two, I found fifteen of them. It's fifteen. Mama, that was fifteen. <laughs> Ooh. Stop lying, fam. You already wilt, wealthy. You're already wealthy. You're there. Not saying you was rich as a kid, but Puff, you didn't have 15 roses on your face. Please stop. Imagine being a millionaire and still feeling glorified by the worst moments of your life. Still finding some sort of admiration for the lowest points in your of your life. To the point that you would embellish even further. Yeah, no, that that's, you would that's add the further crazy part. To an already bad situation, which I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can understand remembering where you came space. from, yeah. but then to lie about it. Yeah, yeah. no, that's not. Like, that's a weird mental space to be in where you have made it out of any possibility of ever being in poverty ever again. And you would go to that length to try to connect your, your, what, your fans or people that, 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 admire you to something that didn't happen but that just shows how far removed he is from it from reality you know he's been wealthy for quite a while it's okay he that you remember roaches, it was just a scratchy fleece or something it's okay that you remember yeah, you came from make, harlem uh, but or some shit he's from it was too much in the game from harlem dog he's from, oh, he from well, wherever he's from he from money earning mount vernon like heavy d and the rest of them money earning mount vernon yeah stop stop the cap sean <laughs> Um, rest in peace to Susan Douglas, the mom from Parenthood. She passed away last week. And I Parenthood guess is underrated. It is. And since you stole my only W, my only other acknowledgement or anniversary is Super Freak turned forty t- this week. I can see that. She's a super freak, super freak. She's, She's super, super freaky, freaky now. Now, if you would have told me Jeezy's version of Super Freak was like ten or I some would, shit, I would have. I, I would have. You know why nuts. I almost started saying last night it was Christmas <laughs> rap. I, I was too. Like, I was like, I was like, wrong. no, forty. That's too weak. Yeah, uh, wrong. Too, 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 too. Yeah. Hell no. Well, shout, I mean, shout out to Buffalo. Shout Buffalo. Out to Buffalo. That's where that's where James is from. Oh, I didn't he, know that. He's the original fly guy. Shaw West Side Gun. Fair enough. Fair enough. My turn. Your turn. All right. Let's start out with the dubs. Last week, it was announced by HBO that they would not be bringing back a season two of Lovecraft Country, mm. aka the best show on. I was going to say that's a pretty HBO popular show in 2020. Hands down. Hands hands down. Was it 2020 or tw- yeah 2020. 2020 2020? Not even. There's no debate. It's the best thing on HBO currently that that was running. Other than maybe Watchmen, which they also said wasn't going to get a season two. Wonder why. Um, so Misha Green took to Twitter right after the announcement and put out some uh, some teasers as to what we would have gotten out of, of season two, right? And so it was a map of the United States that was segmented into one, two, three, like 
four different sections. It had the the West, which was I can't remember the exact names, but it was like something relating back to like indigenous people. It was like there the whole western side of the country was theirs. The middle section, the Midwest was the uh was like a a, a abandoned land that was filled with zombies. Everything below like Tennessee um as far as over as like most of Texas and then as far east as the coast of Florida was the new Negro Republic. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right? Right? Okay. So basically the entire South was was the New Negro Republic. And then you had the Jefferson something county up up Vermont, Delaware, all of that shit up there at the very Vermont. top. But the New Negro Republic? <laughs> oh yeah, no, I need I need that season too. <laughs> so Misha Green, on the heels of her not getting renewed with Warner Brothers and HBO, signs an overall deal with Apple. I was going to say, there's somebody else who would have picked it up. So, if HBO don't like money, if HBO is, oh, well, it's a little too much for <laughs> us. You know, we gave you the Tulsa riots. We don't want anything futuristic dealing with race. Anyways, if they won't take it, I'll, I'll switch HBO Max for, for good what is all going on. Sorry, I'm not watching the Mar of Easttown. You know, sorry, I'm not watching Paws with Sam J or Bill Maher. I'm not interested in any of that shit. I was interested in Lovecraft Country. I was interested in Watchmen. But if you're choosing to, you know, go the route of single season series or short limited series or whatever, whatever your excuse was for not bringing back Lovecraft 2, just, I'll just check out until another Game of Thrones story comes back on. In an era where, like, all these streaming companies are hoarding these shows yeah. like this and, and they they want more and more they're competing for subscribership i don't understand why they would yeah, let i don't like misha green doesn't make sense. but hey their loss um shout out to misha green for her new deal <laughs> with apple i'll be keeping an eye out that's what's up uh on to elville jim clyburn is making yet another <laughs> this is two weeks in a row yeah. two weeks in a row <laughs> because i'm tired of his ass <laughs> i am i am sick of his ass jim clyburn did a town hall in south carolina where he was addressed by an activist there who talked about H.R. 40 and talked about how H.R. 40 was an initiative that was started back in the early 80s. And um, I don't even think it got called to a floor vote for like 20 years after that. Um, it, it's, it's largely been just kind of in stasis for the longest time. Um, we're still holding hearings. Hearings. All the years that we've had on, on, on slavery and racial inequalities, all the years of study and data that we have, and we're still having hearings on whether or not black Americans are owed reparations in this country. So, like, those were some of the part, points that we, he was brought up. He also brought up the fact that the, the, I guess, the collective black wealth is supposed to hit zero by 2050. I'm not I, I, I'm not a numbers guy, so I don't know exactly how that works, but it sounds concerning. Very concerning. Um, just a lot of a lot of stuff dealing with a lot of things dealing with uh, reparations and and how it could help close the racial wealth gap, right? And so at the end of it, after having to stop Jim Clyburn from interrupting him several times throughout it, Jim Clyburn says, "Okay, thank you for your comment." Is there anyone else that has a question and completely ignores him Yikes. and completely fucking ignores him? Look, look here, you piece of shit. Look, look, look at this. Check this out. I don't have any more respect for you than you have for yourself at this point. Right. Like, like I said last week, this man literally betrays his own history of activism uh -huh. with the words that he says today. Like, I, 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 I cannot... I understand people who want to show deference to Jim Clyburn and people who want to honor the, the, the things that he has done in the past, but that's I I, I honor what you do for me today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What have right? you done for me lately? It's basically two different people. Yeah, he's not the same. It's, it's not the same guy. This man is a tool. Literally and figuratively. It, it's it's embarrassing. Honestly. I'm I am so fucking sick of Jim Clyburn and his bullshit about sloganeering. Um he was on MSNBC with Mehdi Hassan, and he was talking about 
Hassan kind of pressed him on this whole stance of sloganeering and defund the police it has a chokehold around the Democratic Party bullshit. And he's like, well, you know, none of the none of the House members that were running last cycle ran on defund the police. Yeah, that was never a thing. What the fuck you talking about? Oh, whoa, whoa. Ask Jamie Harrison uh, here in South Carolina <laughs> uh, what uh, what defund the police did to him. Jamie Harrison is an empty vessel of the establishment, much like yourself, and didn't stand for a fucking thing. Mm. These d- Democrats nowadays are more of they're more the party of we can't have than they are of what we want. Like as much as I hate conservatives, at least they fight for something. At least they advocate for something. At least they are their agenda has something on it. Yep. Not just running around telling people what they can't have. And the Democrats are limiting people and like basically silencing those who actually want to fight for things like that. At what point are you not agreeing with your opposers? You say it's because, oh, well, defund the police uh, doesn't attract people. Well, I I beg to differ because the people who it actually affects are the people. Those those are the people who are calling for defund the police. Right. Yeah. So what 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 is it? Uh, uh, Medicare for all. Let's put defund the police out of here for a second. What's up with Medicare for all? You used to be a proponent of Medicare for all. Maybe it's the fact that it that you take the most pharmaceutical money out of any other congressman. Mm. Maybe. More than likely. Maybe that has a little bit more to do with why you hate Medicare for all as a slogan as opposed to what the American people actually need or what, what does and doesn't lose Senate races. Because last time I checked, you're the Senate majority whip. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out how the party in power is complaining about losing their power due to a slogan that no one's running on. <laughs> Fuck Jim Clyburn once again. Uh, the Biden admin is getting a, another L from me. So there was a recording of a, uh, a meeting with some Republican, um, Republican senators, congressmen. Closed door session and they were discussing... Um, the the attack against the the filibuster and how they kind of have to hold strong on it because they realize as much as we realize is that their ideals or their stance their stances on a lot of issues be it healthcare college education in general uh, infrastructure what have you whatever it is taxing the rich their positions are not popular they are not in the my, the majority right they 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 this whole full approach to fiscal responsibility. That's not a, a very popular stance with voters and they know that. And so with the filibuster making it so that you have to have a super majority, you have to have 10 over what would be a simple one more than the other side vote. Then you, you always have an automatic uh, mechanism in there to uplift the minority thoughts. Right. Right. So these motherfuckers go as far as to say you should call up Christian Cinema, you should call up Joe Manchin, and you should thank them. Thank them. Tell them how bad you feel for them that the people on their side of the party are treating them so bad. And it and it's like they're laughing. They're fucking laughing. Yeah, it's a joke. It's it's literally a joke because while those two assholes or excuse me. While Joe Biden is allowing those two assholes to torpedo his entire agenda, though the people on the other side are laughing Mm -hmm. because it's literally the only thing keeping you you from railroading your agenda, your agenda through the only thing. (laughs) Uh, Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema are the only thing standing in between Joe Biden being what what we wanted to be the new the the new uh, Roosevelt. You know, the the most progressive president of our time or whatever fucking bullshit he had aspirations of doing. You aren't going to get anything done as long as you allow two of your your more conservative Congress people to cuck you. Facts. Um, Wendy Williams. Nasty fuck. Yeah, man. Wendy Williams. Say the best for last. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy Williams has always been a disgusting person to me. Uh-huh. I I did I felt no sympathy for her 
when she was going through her her spat with her with her husband um i i felt no sympathy for it because we watched other people's downfalls and worst moments play out on her show as she spoke about it gleefully and i believe people who put that kind of energy in the world get it back so i i had no sympathy for her when she was going through on, going through her shit with kevin it, 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 you would think that moments like that would humanize a person and all. maybe you would have a different approach towards life. Not even in the least bit, not even in the least bit. So she did a segment where she talked about a TikTok star losing their life and the lead up to it was so dismissive and off putting. Like you would have thought that she was talking about some, some random who's fucking who segment, not a person's death, right? Another black person's death. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't have time for these type of people, these type of personalities. I don't I don't think we should feed into them. The best way the best way to show them what we actually feel about them and what they do is to stop watching. Turn it and on. I know I know daytime television is very popular, and it's honestly it's a lot of white women that watch Wendy Williams. Those are general, the only people so who yeah. have time for it. So Everybody watch else is it. Working. Yeah. So right. I um. I know we don't have a huge responsibility in her platform, but we do have a huge responsibility in validating her. So just like, you know, we throw Stacey Dash to the side, just like we stop fucking with, you know, people like that. Um, She's got to be in that. She's got to. The only thing she does is so dissent in our communities. This is all, this is all she does. There's, she there's focuses on the negative. positive that comes from Wendy Williams. She is a... a, a a filth peddler. She peddles filth. She peddles people's insecurities. Their, Worst moments. Their, 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 their downfalls. She sells it for, for financial gain. Like, I'm not... To mostly white women. Yeah, to, to white people. Is nuts. Yeah, it's, it's just nuts. It's just disgusting. So, uh, yeah, fuck Wendy Williams as well. Yeah, for sure. Come out. Any other doves, L's, anything we want to talk about? Uh, cool. Oh, no, no, we out. Thanks for watching another Back of the Bus Squad episode. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you want to check out another episode related to this, go ahead and click that video to the left. And if you want to catch up on some of our other episodes, make sure you click the playlist below.